Hello, and thank you for taking time to watch this training. On this particular training, we're going to talk about the custom email sending server setting within your account. Now, before we dive into the meat and potatoes of this training, I do want to talk to you a little bit about what an email sending server is. On a real basic level, an email sending server is simply an electronic version of a mail person. They take the mail from your mailbox, process it through the system, and deliver it to somebody else's mailbox. There are two main reasons why I would recommend that you send your emails through your own custom server. The first reason is improved email delivery. One of the biggest hurdles to getting emails delivered to the inbox is the reputation of the server that's sending the email. Now, I'm not saying that our servers are bad. I'm just saying that our servers send a lot more email from a lot of different people than your servers do. And the second reason is having your emails actually sent through your email address. If you don't have it sent through your email address, it's going to be sent on behalf of your email address from our server. Now let's start going through the custom email sending server page here. First, understanding the consequences. Make sure you review that. Once you're done watching this training, you can, of course, close the video so it doesn't take up all the space on the screen. And let's start talking about configuring your custom email sending server. And so the first thing you need to review is the provider. Where is your email address hosted? So if you click on this little drop-down menu here, you'll see several options here. You'll see two different options for Gmail. The first option is where we use their API so that you can just log in with your username and password and connect everything behind the scenes. Or if you need to be a little bit more refined with your integration, you can choose the G Suite SMTP option, which I don't recommend. This is a much more complicated or complex setup. I would recommend just using the Gmail slash G Suite option and then log in with your username and password. If you're using something like Gmail or Yahoo or Hotmail, there's going to be limitations on how many emails you can actually send through their server on a daily basis. Now, if you're going to be sending a lot of emails and you're worried you might go over those limitations, you might want to consider some of these third-party email sending services like SendGrid, SparkPost, or Turbo SMTP. You'll notice that there's two options for SendGrid. SendGrid, the standard SMTP option, or the API option, which is a little bit easier to configure once you go get your API key from SendGrid. And of course, if the provider you use is not listed as an option here, you'll need to choose the other option here, which allows you to input the server port, connection security, all of that stuff manually. You just need to reach out to whoever your email provider is and get the details. What I'd recommend, just take a screenshot of this, send it over to them and ask them what you need to input for the server, port, and security. Username and password 99.9% .9 of the time is your email address and the password to log in to that email account. Now the last option I want to talk to you about is the email footer. When you're using the phone burner server, we require at the bottom of every email that there be a footer that explains that this email was sent from the phone burner mail platform. If you want to opt out, click here. There's that whole language at the bottom of the emails. If you're sending from your own server, we give you the option to remove that if you'd like. Totally up to you if you want to use our footer. Now, I do want to point out, if you decide not to use our footer, you can still include language in your emails to allow people to opt out. So now that we've talked about all the settings, if you feel comfortable with this, you can go ahead and stop watching the video and start configuring things. But I'm going to take a few moments right now, and I'm going to actually set up or integrate a few different email addresses, show you what an error might look like if it's input incorrectly, and show you what it will look like when you do it right. So let's go back up to the top here. I'm going to choose Gmail G Suite. So I click on Login with Google. That's going to allow me to choose my Google account. So I'm going to choose that. Review the permissions and Allow. Click Allow again. It's actually going to connect to my Gmail account, send an email. Our servers are going to receive that email. Once our servers receive the email, the testing will be done, and this will be set to on. 
And there you go. You can see our SMTP server has been set to active. So that's the G Suite where we're actually using the API. Let's try a Google through the standard SMTP. Everything's going to be configured appropriately for me. I just need to go down to the username and password. Username should be my email address. The password should be our actual password to access the account. However, something to consider, if you have two-step authentication enabled, you will need to set up an app-specific password. So now let me show you what the system will do if you put in the wrong password. Hit Update Settings. So I just tried to connect to my email, but I entered the wrong password. I get this error. This is the actual response that we got from their server. But this is the important one right here. Username and password not accepted. So that tells us that there is something wrong with the username and or password. And we just need to go down here and fix it. Now, I use two-step authentication, so the password I typed in there was my, might have been my regular password, and I didn't go create an app-specific password. So I just need to go to the Gmail support and create an app password. So they give me instructions on how to go and create an app-specific password. Let's go ahead and close that. Let's switch back to Gmail G Suite. Click on Send Emails using my Google account. It's going to retest everything. Once the testing is done, I'm all set. Now, finally, before we wrap this thing up, I do want to point out that although this is considered an advanced user feature, we highly recommend that everybody use this. It's just a better way of delivering your emails from the system. So if you are running into trouble, feel free to reach out to our support team, either through the chat bubble down here, go ahead and start a new conversation, or Go to support and reach out to our support team. You can call, open a ticket, or you can go to the knowledge base. Go to the knowledge base. You can do a quick search for SMTP, hit enter, and you can see all the different knowledge base articles that will help you configure your account to send emails from your personal email sending server. Thank you again for taking the time to watch this video. I know your time is valuable, and I hope you found some valuable information in this to help you have more success with our system. Thanks again, and have a great day.